the purpose of this video is using one big example problem to explain or review the central limit theorem. So what is central limit theorem? CLT central limit theorem. So here is the story. So let's say we have a population. All right. So population. I don't care the distribution of this population. Again, we have a population. The distribution of that, I don't care at all. So I have a population, and then I am going to take many, many samples. So this is my first sample, second sample, third sample, fourth sample, so on and so forth. And then for each sample, what is a sample? Sample is you have uh, tons of numbers in a population. Sample is you grab some of them. So you have some numbers on your hand. That is your first sample. And I can easily calculate the sample size. So I call that the x1 bar, the second sample, x2 bar, x3 bar, x4 bar, so on and so forth. All right, so here is what happened. As long as the sample size is big enough, what is big enough? As long as the sample size is greater than or equal to 30, so we say that the distribution of this x bar, so this is a bunch of x bar, right? So this x bar form their own normal distribution. Again, I have a population. I don't care what the distribution is, really don't care. I grab many, many samples, so n1, n2, n3, n4, n5, and then I keep doing this. For each sample I have, I have a sample mean. So the central limit theorem says as long as n is big enough, greater than or equal to 30, the distribution of these x bars is normal with mean equals to mu and then standard deviation equals to sigma divided by square root of n. And this, we can also call this standard error. All right, so how do we do the normal standardization? So this time we are going to say that this is a random variable. All right, so this random variable has this sample mean and this sample standard dv, uh, this standard error. And then the way to standardize is we have z equals to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. And then we can also call this a z procedure. And then we use the z procedure when the sigma is given. So in this problem, I said that uh, we are looking for the calorie content of chocolate cookies, right? So I gave you a mean. So the mean is equal to 130. And then the population standard deviation, sigma, is equals to 25. And then we have a n equals to 36. So since n is given, that clearly tells me the formula that we have to use is this one. I know when you study normal distribution, we have z equals to x bar minus mu. No, not, not, not x bar. Just x. x minus mu divided by um, sigma. So that one we don't care about the sample size. So it's not we don't care about the sample size. That one, the sample size is equals to 1. So n equals to 1. So even though you have sigma divided by square root of n, so that is equals to sigma, right? So that's the difference between these two formulas. So what's the first problem? The first problem says calculate the probability that the mean calorie content is at least 122. So A is asking probability that the average at least, at least means 122 or above. At least is the same thing as no less than. And then we standardize that. So that is um, Z greater than or equal to. You take what is given in the problem. You subtract mu divided by sigma over square root of n, which is 36. And then you calculate what that is. This one, I want you to do this in one step. So look at the calculator on the left. So this is how I do the top, open parenthesis, 122 minus 130, close parenthesis, divided by 25 over the square root of 36. Uh, in in mine, I'm not going to uh, close the square, close a parenthesis for the square root. I've just closed parenthesis for the entire denominator. So make sure every number is right. All right. So I click enter. So that is negative 1.92. And then that is my Z. So what is the graph look like? The graph looks like this. We have a bell curve. And then the mean is equals to zero because that is standard normal. We are using Z now. 
negative 1.92 is about there, greater than or equal to is this area. So to find the probability or to find the area under the curve, we have to use normal CDF. So that is normal CDF. Normal CDF means normal distribution. Cumulative C stands for cumulative. Density function cumulative. The C means we are adding up the area under the curve from one cut to another cut. So the calculator command is you have a lower limit, negative 1.92. The upper limit all the way to the right, we have a past infinity. Mean is equals to zero. Standard deviation is equals to one. And then we do this in our calculator. So second large normal CDF, negative 1.92, not minus, negative. Negative sign is between the decimal point and the enter key. And then comma, past infinity, we type one. Second comma. 99, so that is 1 times 10 to the 99th power, which is 1 followed by 99 zero. It's a huge value. And then 0 and 1, click enter, then you get your probability. I usually use four decimal places, 0 0.9726. So that is my probability. So if you go through this procedure, that means you just show all your work. There is a way to get straight to the answer with now showing a single line of work. Which one should you use? Uh, you have to look at your test or your homework or your quiz. If the, the paper says show all your work, then you have to show all your work. So if you don't need to show any work to earn credits, then you can do this. So you do normal CDF. We start at 122. And then we go to past infinity. Each time, the mean is no longer zero. The mean is 130 because that is before standardization. And then the standard error is sigma divided by square root of n. So this is one calculator command to get straight to this answer. All right, so that is number one. And then number two, uh, we can't see the problem anymore. So if you want to get the problem, I don't want to constantly going back and forth up and down. So if you want to get the problem down, uh, you can just take a screenshot of this. All right. Did you get your screenshot? I will read the problem to you anyway. So in part B, part B is asking mean is no more than 127. So probability that x bar is no more than, no more than means at most. So the opposite of more than is less than or equal to. So you have probability z is less than or equal to 127 minus the mean. The mean is uh, 130 divided by 25 over the square root of 26. And then you calculate what that equals to. So open parenthesis 127 minus 130 divided by open parenthesis 25 over the square root of 36, right? Not 25. The square root of 36 close parenthesis. So we have negative 0 0.72. And then uh, 0, negative 0 0.72 less than or equal to, so we have this. And then this will be a normal CDF from negative infinity to negative 0 0.72. The mean is equal to 0, the standard deviation is equal to 1 because z means standard normal, means 0, standard deviation equals to 1. And then you do second verse normal CDF from negative infinity, negative, not minus, negative infinity, second comma key, 99, so that is negative infinity, or negative 0 0.72, 0 and 1. So that is 0 0.2358. So that is your answer. The one step without showing any work, is normal CDF from negative infinity to 127. The mean is equal to 130. The standard deviation is 25 divided by square root of 36 is one step to get to the final answer. So that will be B. And then C is uh, no more than 1,110. So C is probability, no more than, the opposite of more than, 
is less than or equal to, so x bar less than or equal to 110. And then we standardize that. So we have our 110 minus 130 divided by 25 over the square root of 36. Let's see what that equals to. 110 minus 130 divided by 25 over the square root of 36. So this is negative 4.8, the probability will be extremely small. The reason is, if you draw this in a perfect scale and then think about the empirical rule, so this is a zero, negative 4.8 almost push the cut all the way to the left hand side, like right here. So the probability will be super tiny. So this one you do normal, CDF from negative infinity to negative 4.8, the mean is zero, standard deviation is one, take a look. Second verse, normal CDF from negative infinity to negative 4.8, zero and one. So here is what I want you to, to look, this answer. Is the probability equals to 7.9? No, that is not true. Look at the right hand side, you see a e negative 07, right? So this is a 7.93 times 10 to the negative 7 is in scientific notation. Uh, this means the probability is very close to zero. So if you want to look at what the decimal is, that is 0 0.60 and then 793. So that's the probability. It's very close to zero because you push the cut all the way to the left and then you want the area on the left hand side the probability, the area, is super, 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 super tiny. So super tiny means close to zero. Okay, so the next one, we have a D. D is up between 124 and 132. So 124, right? Not 134. 124 x bar, 132. So that is uh, 124 minus... 130 divided by 25 over root 36, z 132 minus 130 divided by the same thing. All right, so let's quickly calculate this 2z value, or you call it a z score. We have a 124 minus 130 divided by square root of 25, uh, not square root of 25, just 25 divided by the square root of 36, which is a 6. But I prefer to just input what I saw on my paper. Okay, everything looks good. Minus 130. All right, so that is negative 1.44. Using technology, you can be lazy. If you want this entry pops up again, simply type second and then type enter. Second, enter. And then you move your cursor all the way to the left and then override the 124 to 132. So that is 0 0.48. So 0, negative 1.44, 0 0.48. And then uh, this is the area that you are looking for. So you have normal CDF from negative 1.44 to 0 0.48, 0 and 1. Second, second bars, normal CDF, negative 1.44 to 0 0.48, mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. So that is 0 0.609, 5. Is the equal or not equal important? The inclusive, exclusive. The answer is not important. So that means even though you remove the equal right there, you still get the same answer. Why? Because this random variable is a continuous random variable. All right, what about the one step to get to this answer? The one step is you do normal CDF from 124 to 132 
the mean is equal to 130, the standard deviation is 25 divided by the square root of 36. That is one step to get to the final answer. All right. Oh, I forgot to show you the one step for the previous part, right? So let's go back to the previous part. So the previous part, we have that right there. So to make things easier to read, I will use a different color. So this one will be a normal CDF for C from negative infinity to 110, right? The mean is uh, 130. The standard deviation is 25 divided by square root of 36, right? So that is one step to get to this answer. Again, the one step is a very convenient method if you don't need to show any work. If you show work is required, you use this one step thing, you get no credits anyway. Because if you don't show this standard standardization, this standardization, standardization and the calculator command, basically you don't get credits. So show work or not show work, read your paper, all right? Okay, so looks like uh, this problem is done. I still have three more parts for you. So this one, uh, let me show you those three parts. So they are the percentile problem. So percentile. So the first one is find the 20.8 percentile. I did not use the word upper. I did not use the word mid middle, just percentile. That means left side. So 20.8 percentile. We got that right here. So we have mean in the middle and then we cut 20.8% on the left. So this Z is inverse norm, 0 0.208 and then 0 and then a 1. So second bars, we have inverse norm, 0 0.208, 0 and then 1. All right, that is negative 0 0.813. And then a Z, I usually use three decimal places. And then to find out the mean, the X bar, we have to solve an equation. We don't know what, what the X bar is. We subtract the mean. The mean is uh, 130 divided by sigma over square root of n equals to negative 0 0.813 and then you solve for x bar. So this is uh, x bar minus 130. You have a uh, negative 0 0.813 times 25 divided by square root of 36. And then after the job is done, you add the 130 to it. So that is x bar equals to negative 0 0.813 times 25 over square root of 36, and then plus 130 times 25 divided by square 25 divided by the square root of 36 and then add 130 to it so you have 126.6 612 okay uh uh the decimal uh i think for carry one decimal place is enough so this will be the carry content all right so that means the bottom 20.8 the lightest calorie is 126.6 calories or below right 126.6 or below that is the bottom 20.8 percent and then the top 10 percent the one that contains the highest 10 percent calories let's find out what the mean is so, uh, and then the part F, if you go back to the problem, I asked for upper 10%, upper. Upper means right-hand side, top 10%, just like taking a test, the highest 10%. We have mean right in the middle, and then this is 10%, uh, we have a Z. So the Z is inverse norm, 10%, zero, one. So inverse norm, second bars, inverse norm, 0 0.10, and then 0, and then a 1. So you have negative 1.282. Is that what I want? Uh, almost. 
not the right answer yet. This z is negative, all right? The one I want is on the right hand side is positive, right? The graph is symmetric, so the one I want is z equals to 1.282. How come the calculator gives you a negative? Because every time you input an uh, area to the inverse norm command, they assume the 10% is on the left. On the left, they assume it is on the left. Do you want a positive or negative? You are a human, you look at your graph, you make a decision. All right, so we have x bar minus 130 divided by 25 over square root of 36 equals to 1.282. So you take the 1.282, look at my calculator, and then you multiply mo multiply this fraction, right? So you multiply the numerator divided by the denominator. And then after the thing is done, you add 130 to it. There is no need to use parentheses because according to the order operation, we go from left to right. So the calorie content, the top 10%, is 135.3 calories or above. If the calorie is 135.3 or above, then that is the top 10%. The last one is the middle 52%. So middle 52%. So we sketch a graph and then cut 52% in the middle. So we cut 52% right in the middle. And then we have a Z1, we have a Z2. Can we just find the Z1 and Z2 right now? The answer is no, not yet. We have to do one more step to get it. So we have 52% in the middle. How much do we have left on each end? So we take the 100 minus 52 divided by 2 if you don't want to do any math. So we take 100 minus 52 and then you divide it by 2. You have 48 divided by 2. Then you get a 24% on each side. So this will be a 24% and then this will be a 24%. And then I will be using that 24 to get my Z. So the Z1 is equal to inverse norm. 24% 0 1 z1 is equals to 0 0.24 0 and 1 so we have a negative on the left and then a positive on the right and then you solve for x bar there are two different x bar so the first one is x bar minus 1 130 right divided by 25 over square root of 36 so you have the uh, ne negative z and then you do one from the positive seven oh six so this one you take the z negative c one point zero c zero point seven oh six do the negative first right times 25 divided by square root of 36 and then you add 130 to it so this one gives you a uh, 1x bar 127.1 calorie and then when you do the other one you don't want to type this thing again right if you want to type it again just just to do it if you want to take a little shortcut you can click second and then click the minus key no, sorry sorry second and then click the negative sign do you see a n s above the negative sign that is the previous wait hold on hold on hold on i was saying this too fast sorry let me do do this again you click second and then click enter apologize for my mistake second enter so second enter So the previous entry pops up, right? Entry, the previous line you type popped up, and then you delete the negative. All right, so x bar is equals to 132.9.9. All right, so these two are the answers. All right, so that will be all in this lesson. I will see you all in the next video. All right.